so next we here we have uh, hotspots of high probability of climate related disasters amid covid 19 so we saw like how you know like this gap is rising and the funding what is needed you know for the you know like requirement you know is not matching up right and uh, yeah there are uh, like this region you know like and this percentage and all that so among this if you see like in the south asian uh, you know like uh, nations so what are those regions which are you know like responsible if we see for the covid 19 okay so some uh, you know like a, a confirmed covid cases you know like you see with, uh, with this you know like a color intensity and the size right and then uh, seasonal you know outlook data so this is a very interesting uh, you know like uh, example you know like a uh, taken over here which talks about the hotspots of high probability of climate related disasters amid covid 19 okay so uh, it focuses majorly uh, well there are you know, like some hotspots uh, in, uh, in india as well pakistan afghanistan and uh, bangladesh nepal bhutan and sri lanka right including our uh, uh, like a neighbor you know partly uh, myanmar also right so in this portion if you see these are the reasons you know at the top you know like uh, the india's portion if you see gilgit Bal baltistan you know like leh ladakh jammu kashmir all of these you know like a portion in an indian uh, uh, jurisdiction and uh, on the uh, Mizoram side also if I see and uh, yeah at the look at, at some portion in the Tamil Nadu and some portions here in the Rajasthan right and in Pakistan uh, is this Sindh you know like Karachi area and then, then Afghanistan is the uh, you know like a north eastern you know like a portion and uh, yeah in uh, Myanmar also on this side which is you know like a neighboring to our uh, you know like a northeastern states Tripura and uh, Manipur okay so that portion and uh, yeah andaman nicobar in, in 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 this region over here in sri lanka if you see is uh, totally you know like inundated in this uh, you know like a green you know like a shade which talks about uh, you know like a precipitation you know like a 60 and above normal right so these green ones are uh, you know like above normal and uh, these you know brown ones are uh, you know like below normal right so in this shade uh, you can understand and uh, confirmed cases you can understand through this so dhaka is one of the you know worst affected you can see over here plus here uh, in the in the in the pakistan also there are several and uh, in some uh, like a low intensity we have also spread across like india one being here in guwahati here in, in nepal Kathmandu, right and then uh, ahmedabad right and 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 uh, many of these you know like a places right so this talks about you know like that probability okay so overall if we see uh, like uh, income distributions in india china and sub-saharan africa these are the you know, like worst affected you know like regions across the world okay so the data is from uh, 2010 for sub-saharan africa and india and china this data belongs to year 2000 right so here you can see the number of people in millions okay so uh, income uh, you can see here like a one point you know like a two five dollars you know like a per day you know like a this uh, you know is the international you know like a this uh, threshold okay so uh, these many pers uh, you know like a, a number of people in millions if you see India actually tops here you know close to I think this will be 15 it around, around 19 you know like a million you know like a rough, roughly okay this and uh, china it tops around here around 16 17 16 16.5 and uh, then sub-saharan africa you know around uh, you know like a 13 13 and a half right like that and gradually if you see this uh, you know like as, as the dollars are increasing you know this number is actually falling down okay so this is this threshold you know which needs to be like you know like uh, addressed so now we will see you know like uh, some uh, you know like uh, uh, snapshots about uh, financing the you know like a future here yeah, right so in this uh, you know like uh, this uh, uh, data is taken uh, you know like uh, from uh, this site okay which talks about how international public finance should fund a global social compact to eradicate poverty so the overall you know like a goal is to eradicate you know like a poverty and how this can be done so some snapshots 
If we stick to business as usual, we will fall far short of our development goals in 2030. Okay, so that means we need, you know, like a drastic measures, you know, like a major changes. 500 million people will still be living on less than 1.25, you know, dollars a day. Okay. 4 million children will die needlessly before the age of 5. So this is the catastrophe, you know, like a human society is facing. Low income, fragile states will be left even further behind. Okay. If it is business as usual. Right. But we can avoid this. Aid won't solve the whole problem. Well, aid is, uh, I think, a temporary phenomena. It cannot be a permanent solution. So the permanent solution it must come, you know, like uh, uh, at that place, which is, you know, sustainable, you know, like a long lasting and all. But if we can mobilize the money and be smart about spending it, we can help to eradicate global poverty over the next 15 years. Okay. So extreme poverty will be even more concentrated in sub-Saharan Africa, that the region like we have like a seen earlier. The number of people living in extreme poverty in millions, if you see this, uh, you know, like here, this uh, yellow color, you know, belongs to this sub-Saharan Africa. In year 2011, It is close to 400 millions and uh, which is going to increase if you see by 2030, right? If it is not addressed properly, right? It's going to go somewhere, you know, like a close to 440, you know, like a million, you know, like a people living in extreme poverty, you know, $1.25 a day and less than, you know, like that range. South Asia. If you see like this region 2011 you know this used to be you know, like a much wider over here okay close to 400 you know again but it is expected that this is going to come down you know like drastically and you know, a very low you know like this thing but still this needs to come to zero east asia and pacific also is registering uh, like you know like a good reduction in this and the rest of the developing world okay is also like a good but not much of uh, you know like this thing uh, in improvement but yes it is it is it is getting reduced right we need a new global uh, global social compact social protection for the poorest so that it can be like a given to the most you know like a needy free basic universal health care free primary and secondary education for all so that everybody and anybody has you know like access to this like we have discussed in the uh, education you know like a sdg earlier like how you know like a free education is going to help you know, like a society and uh, how midday meal schemes and several, you know, like a such schemes, you know, for the male, female, like, you know, like a uh, students, right? Uh, like, you know, health facilities, sanitation, toiletry, etc. on the, you know, like a school premises has helped, uh, you know, like a students to return to the schooling, right? So, there are so much in details if we look at it uh, like a lo uh, locally, right, which needs to be addressed, you know, for solving this problem. What will this cost? low income countries per year 148 billion dollars okay but there is a shortfall of 73 billion you know like a dollars even if there is taxes and use existing aid there will be still a shortfall of 73 billion okay so this is this financing we are talking about over here that it is not enough okay and uh, it needs to be accelerated at a much faster pace because the, the, the gap is widening you know so this is this logic of you know putting all of these you know like a slice together like how you know like a financing plays an important role in reducing actually this wide you know like a gap which is at present is like an increasing right so financial ads are like a one a crucial you know like links in this uh, successful implementation of SDGs. But if governments fulfill their existing aid places, we can meet these costs and still have an at least 40 billion to spare. Okay. So it's not that it, it, it cannot be done. It, it definitely can be done. Okay. But needs to be done with you know, like full willingness. We can't afford not to. July's financing for development summit should. One, create or expand global funds for health, education in humanitarian crisis and social protection. To redirect 50% of foreign aid budgets towards the poorest countries where aid is most needed. Third, commit rich countries to give 0.7% of their national income in aid. Fourth, bring emerging economies into the system as contributors. Fifth, develop smarter, more flexible and long-term ways to provide it. So how this aid, you know, like it can be managed, you know, is given over here. How this, you know, like a financing can be structured is, is given, you know, like over here with these you know like a five you know like uh, uh, inputs okay 
now moving on to the you know like a next you know like a chapter over here uh, from united nations global compact okay so the next few slides are uh, taken from this source okay here we are going to discuss financial innovations for the sdg so what innovations you know can be uh, actually planned can be actually taken up for you know like a managing finances for the successful implementation of sdgs right so then the previous slides we have uh, established why is it crucial you know how much you know like uh, is the amount needed what is the gap and all of those things now let's see how it will be you know like a done you know as suggested by the un global compact you can refer you know like at this source for more information the un global compact's financial innovation for the sdgs action platform brings together a multidisciplinary group of finance practitioners and experts to develop innovative private financial instruments that have the potential to direct private finance towards critical sustainability solutions this is the mandate you know it has the potential to you know direct private finances towards critical sustainability solutions okay led in collaboration with the principles for responsible investment pri and the united nations environmental program finance initiatives unepfi the platform will develop guidance on impact investment strategies that support the sustainable development goals map current and emerging financial instruments and provide a laboratory for the development of new innovative instruments ultimately the goal is to improve the risk return profile of sdg investments to attract institutional investors so <clears throat> what are the goals of the action platform over here we'll see this map current and emerging sdg finance instruments and provide a laboratory for the development of new innovative instruments look for innovations in the four major gap areas for sdg investments identify new business and financing models reducing risks providing investment scale and matching the risk return profile of institutional investors so if you see we are talking about over here in the first one map current and emerging sdg finance instruments so what are those instruments available on our disposal okay then uh looking for innovation in four major you know like a gap areas the first one is the identifying new business and financing models second reducing risk risk you may be knowing like you know what are the you know like a potential risks which may cause you know like a turbulence disturbance and breakdowns right providing investment scale and matching the risk return profile of institutional investors okay so these are the four major gap areas which require innovation in 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 these right to deal with third point involve all relevant actors in the investment value chain companies banks insurance agencies asset managers pension funds etc right so you know involving all of these together in this uh, overall you know like value chain finally fourth point talks about focus on sdg sectors emerging or frontier markets and economic sectors that can contribute most to the sdgs including health food water and sanitation energy infrastructure education finance and insurance okay yeah so these are the overall you know like goals of this action platform okay well outcomes mapping of financial innovation benchmarking and analytics and innovation labs okay so three major outcomes so for mapping let's see overview of all financial innovations with a highly visual graph plotting each solution by major gap area asset class and sdgs and mapping their potential investment size against the overall sdg financing gap then it will be pinpointed quantitative you know like a plotting you know like a data graph which will give you like a you know real insights database of financial innovations searchable by sdg asset class or major gap area standard description and resources description of each financial innovation structures what is how it fits in the investment value chain and its potential size in terms of investment and impact useful resources including documents and templates for standardization okay in benchmarking and analytics third party market and financial research on the blended returns of the sdg investments third party benchmarking scorecards of companies and investment sdg contribution okay so this will help uh, establishing you know like that uh, you know like a uh, plus minus you know like a zero base you know like which we call it as a bench you know like a marking also and from here and onwards you can you know like a plan 
your uh, implementation and they are in like a, a positivity right thirdly innovation lab pilot program for innovative sdg investment products and solutions annual competition for the most innovative sdg investments a tally of financing committed and deployed for each solution and in the aggregate okay so these are the outcomes well what activities so we will see there are you know, like some number of activities you know like listed over here okay so four you know like a major phases given over here the first one if you see about consultants second develop and test model solutions third talks about stimulating and tackle tackling uh, tracking update uptakes and then fourth one public launch and mainstreaming right so in this phase is if you see the goals are consultations with major constituencies like we have seen corporations banks institutional investors etc establishing landscape of most innovative solution by asset class and sdgs highlight gap in financing propose concept of solution that could be developed okay so this is the important part activities and meetings in this like in person meetings right and then uh, virtual meetings crowdsourcing via online submissions etc in the second phase if you see develop and test model solution develop model solutions and resources among smaller groups of platform members experts and partners launch web based mapping on financial innovation for sdg investments with standards definitions and practical resources working group members for each categories of innovations business models financial models de-risking solutions scaling solutions innovative sources of financing okay so all of it if you see in a business environment you know you first you know look for the business model you know what is that modality on which you are going to you know like establish your whole uh, you know like a financial uh, you know like entity and how you are going to like you know achieve your goals and targets even financial goals and targets you know like benefits earning benefits and you know like achieving some you know like a tangible and intangible you know like a targets then developing financial markets uh, models around it you know like a sourcing you know like operations maintenance all of those de-risking solutions how to minimize you know like a risks and vulnerabilities scaling up okay so not just as one place multiple places you know an implementation plus scaling up the size you know maybe if you are able to cater to maybe 1000 people you know why not to go and test for 10000 people okay from 10000 to you go to like you know like 1 lakh people 1 million people and and, and so on right and uh, yeah finally like of course you know like a financing is the you know, like a key to everything so innovative sources of financing how more you know like a sources of financing can be identified developed and you know like a harvested right so in person meetings yeah etc the third point you know stimulating and tracking uptake okay so introduce mapping and model solutions to major constituencies call for unilateral collective commitments okay prioritize initial commitments then uh, fourth one public launch and mainstreaming Promotion, marketing and other activities to maximize the use of platform, active creation of new innovation and maintenance relevance to the platform over time. Okay, so these are the measures, you know, which came uh, like just, just, just few years back. Okay, further with the, you know, like a feedback and uh, you know, like a improvements and all of those, you know, like insights received, it can be enhanced into, a, you know, like a more positive, you know, like a outlook, uh, you know, of this whole thing, right? It can be taken up, you know, like a forward, right? So for the overall financing, you know, like a scenario for SDGs, you know, so this is the layout, you know, like, uh, uh, you know, like this is the source private sector investment and sustainable development, UN Global Compact, right, from year 2015. So you can see over here at the heart of it, we have the, you know, like a 17 SDGs over here, right. And if I begin from this side, okay, so it begins all here at the people, you know, like a level. It goes to the like a asset owners, you know, like a in investment managers, like in this area, you know, like led by banks, insurance, exchanges, etc. Okay, so from these uh, institutional investors, it comes to the you know, like a government, right? And uh, then from this side, from the people, it goes even directly to the like a companies. It goes to the foundations, right, and multiple other you know, like a places. Okay. And from all of this, you know, like a financial economy, like a, this thing, it, it drops down to the private financial for public investment, okay, taxes, pension funds, and all of them, okay. From here, it, it, it uh, again, it starts going back to the, you know, like a, uh, you know, like a system, to the, you know, like a public system in the real economy, okay. With the help of good governance and rule of law, enabling environment, sustainable financial regulation, incentives on catalytic finance, sovereign wealth funds, you know, public partner private partnerships okay PPPs you may have heard of this is the you know, like latest thing okay 
so uh, from here if you see you know it uh, with the help of foundations companies and all of these you know inputs you know corporate investments fdi social investments you know it goes to build on you know like a, this uh, you know like a set of you know like sdgs you know these overall targets finally you know like helping into the inclusive growth human needs and capabilities natural resources corporate governance and enabling environment inside these you know you can talk about uh, human rights prod productivity taxes jobs labor standards you know in human needs and capabilities you can talk about health education women empowerment etc <coughs> natural resources you know like a food agriculture energy water sanitation etc and then uh, in the in, in uh, corporate governance and enabling environment part infrastructure technology human rights anti corruption and all of those moments so like from environment to social to the economics and all of these you know like a parameters criteria you know of sdgs will get uh, you know like uh, this uh, this thing so this is this overall uh, you know like a investment chain this is how it works and uh, you know it, it forms you know like this bulk right so you can see the different partners you know for the you know like a un global compact and its uh, different allies who are working in sync so the overall background sdg financing opportunity achieving the global go uh, goals opens up us dollars 12 trillion of market opportunities in the four economic systems examined by the commission these are food and agriculture cities energy and materials and health and well being the total economic price from implementing the global goals could be 2 to 3 times bigger assuming that the benefits are captured across the whole economy and accompanied by much bigger labor and resource productivity okay so some uh, gaps you can see over here you know current participation midpoint is, is shown in this uh, green you know high participation midpoint is shown through this blue and total investment gap range is given in this light blue you know like a shaded you know like a this line okay so in the power you can see in all of these uh, you know like this thing current participation midpoint is on the you know like a left side on the like a lesser side and the high participation midpoint is always on the you know like it's right side of respective you know like this green bubbles okay and investment gaps are given over here you can see like at this uh, actually scale it talks about you know like us billion dollars here extreme 700 to like 100 and probably here it is like a close to zero okay so from here if you see this range is like too big right here this also is too big right so this is this gap you know which makes uh, things you know like works a worst and vulnerable right so different sectors power climate change mitigation food security telecom transport ecosystems and biodiversity health water and sanitation climate change adaptation education so different uh, you know like activities and meetings you know like uh, how how it is the whole thing has happened so you can see different uh, like a stage wise maybe you can read it in your leisure time consultation and research for initial mapping so consultation crowdsourcing you know like uh, uh, desk research etc then coming down to the working sessions you know initial mappings and then uh, yeah developing these uh, five you know like uh, goals over here business models financial model desk risk de risking scaling mapping investments then overall final you know like a mapping over here from this you go back to you know like a different uh, calls you know like happening at different uh, you know, like a places and locations Finishing the SDGs in Asia Pacific. So, how it is happening in uh, Asia Pacific? Asia, okay. So, in this region, if you see, domestic private, forty-eight percent. Then, second, domestic public at forty-three point six percent. Then we have international private, seven percent. International public at only zero point four percent. okay so this is you know like the situation in asia pacific okay next chart talks about government revenues across the region as a whole have more than doubled in the past 10 years rising from a total of 
US dollars 1.9 trillion in 2008 to US dollar 4.2 trillion in 2017. Okay, so more than double. You can see this in like a graph going over here. But remains very low in some parts of the region as less than US dollar 500 per person in 10 countries. Yeah, so this uh, you know like inclination is slower you know in uh, majority of the countries where you know like this intervention is needed even more right so this needs to actually practically change you know this improvement in ldc's and you know like the place of need must actually improve at much faster you know like the rate then we have a globally private investment aligned to the sdgs are rising rapidly well it is increasing but yes we saw the need and pinpointed you know like a range also where it needs to improve more private investment in energy if you see from year 2013 to 17 you know it has doubled you know, like more than doubled right uh, impact investment manifold green bonds total outstanding so from uh, 2013 to 17 in a gap of just 4 years you know like you see how much this this also has more than doubled right but still presents a small part of the picture energy foreign investment bounds right so 49 uh, billion dollar private investment in energy mobilized by ppps asia pacific okay and 701 billion total energy investment in asia pacific so you see the humongous you know like a figure Fund investment, 31 billion impact investment, Asia Pacific excluding Central Asia, 906 billion growth in pension fund assets plus venture capital, Asia Pacific. Here we have 338 billion green bonds outstanding, Asia Pacific, 4.9 trillion corporate bonds outstanding, ASEAN plus 3. So UNDP services in the region, so uh, you know Indo-Pacific, Asia-Pacific, what is you know like uh, happening if you see from this point of view, right. So integrated national financing frameworks for the SDG, it begins here, then SDG budgeting, you know we have seen it earlier, then uh, you know like looking for your instruments, you know, and uh, leveraging international uh, you know finances, etc unlocking private finances then uh, aligning business strategies and finally impact measurement and sdg finance reporting right so this is a cyclic uh, you know like a program which underlines you know the whole process yeah and it brings it all uh, together if you see undp delivered you know 3.19 billion dollars in the region in 2015 to 18 such a huge investment through approaches tailored by 24 offices covering 36 countries and territories so very inclusive uh, you know like a geographical uh, you know representation from uh, most of the places with a broad portfolio of public and private partners and then finally working on accelerate progress across the region and globally some of the partners are listed down over here As you can see many of these uh, private companies also and uh, uh, publicly funded initiatives also here we have this ASEAN you know, like a European Commission, ADB, Chinese government, UK Net, you know, Sweden, Unilever, you know, and uh, ISDB, Green Climate Fund, GEF, Biofin, right, all of them are there. So now we will focus, you know, these uh, financing things more on the Asia Pacific uh, region. And let's see the report of uh, UNDP, you know, like uh, what it says. So, strengthening planning financial, you know, like a link, roadmap action, and this is the progress. So, what is happening, you can see in this green area, right? Strengthening multi-stakeholder dialogue on financing, okay? So, what is happening here in the processes is the 
facilitating government led process to build consensus for reforms right and then establishing partnerships across public and private for sdg country platform demystifying technical debate on financing to broaden conversation right so effectively managing finance for reserves and finally solutions and reforms for mobilizing resources well where is this whole thing uh, you know happening if you see completed you know already shown uh, through this uh, blue so the blue are the places where uh, you know like ftas have already taken place and green ones are the ongoing ones right and uh, in pipeline afghanistan chart dhana nigeria and south africa well the whole analytical framework of dfa is uh, illustrated over here from public domestic and international from private domestic and international integrated planning and financing for all of them sdgs together you know mous you know, collaborations then going on to monitoring and review transparency accountability etc the dimensions of the dfa analytical framework uh, in this one let me read this for you the dfa analyzes the factors that link planning and finance and brings together actors for a more integrated approach to financing the sdgs it looks at the strengths of existing systems and identifies opportunities where policy change or reform could further enhance financing for the sdgs the analysis is underpinned by five dimensions which constitute an integrated approach to financing the sdgs and which can be applied at the macro sectoral or thematic levels so the first point assessing financial trends what opportunities and challenges does the financial landscape present for realizing national sustainable development plans this needs to be figured out second integrated planning and financing how are planning and finance policy functions aligned to mobilize the resources needed to realize sustainable development plans the third point talks about public private collaboration how does government create an environment that promotes inclusive and sustainable contributions to development from private and public sectors fourth point monitoring and review what systems exist to track finance and monitor sdg outcomes and how are these used to inform policies that aim to deliver sdg outcomes the fifth point transparency and accountability how do governments and other actors hold each other accountable and engage in policy dialogue that supports greater effectiveness you can uh, see it here on this uh, layout okay so we have uh, these blue bubbles which denote about planning system and green denote uh, about uh, financial pol uh, policies and in between we have you know, like this agenda over here right so annual plans if you see annual action plan national budget right then medium you know like a uh, term plans like 3 to 5 years okay so those and then uh, long term plan 10 plus years you know national development plan economic development standard industrialization strategy finance strategy for cheaper for ndp etc so this takes you know, a long time for its uh, planning execution and uh, you know like uh, uh, operations so there are five you know like uh, phases involved in this process inception research and initial consultations consultations on draft findings launch and follow up how the world bank group uh, you know like a fund a uh, funds uh, sdg okay so that is uh, given over here we'll see so <coughs> sdg global goals strengthen the means of implementation and revitalize the global partnership for sustainable development the world uh, bank group sdg fund support countries efforts to realize their development objectives and collectively achieve the global goals this is the overall like a goal well with three objectives you can see one through three build capacity and awareness for implementation of sdgs develop analytical tools to solve global challenges and finally promote multi stakeholder partnerships some places where world bank works
you can see from timor leste to indonesia malaysia sri lanka bangladesh nepal vietnam pakistan tajikistan kyrgyz kazakhstan china philippines there are many right the overall uh, you know world bank objectives build capacity and awareness for implementation develop analytical tools to solve global challenges promote multi stakeholder partnerships in this one we have some more positive responses and recognition of w, uh, wbg work on sdgs from internal and external uh, stakeholders increased number of new reports papers other knowledge products okay increased number of multi stakeholder partnerships increase uptake of sdg agenda across country programs increase visibility of md mbg contributions to un high level political forum so we are referring uh, this report maybe you can search for it for the latest you know like a setup data so building blocks of an inff right governance and coordination assessment and guidance financing strategy monitoring and review so four major uh, you know like a uh, quadrants over here financing needs financing landscape risk assessment policy and institution being uh, constrained policies for public finance policies for private finance policies for non uh, financial uh, mois monitoring of results review and accountability institutional enhancements mechanisms and uh, coordination tools yeah so these are the places where uh, where we will see like a some you know like a sheets if you see this uh, dark blue is given for like a completed ones okay and uh, this uh, blue with this hash pattern completed but update underway you know like uh, here some places it is given and green ones are ongoing ones pipeline there are many of these you know like a given over here which are in pipeline will be coming you know like later sub national yeah so ghana india you know mozambique tanzania thailand and ukraine so these are the places you see ongoing one i think there is is there in uh, ukraine also belarus also right typical role of the F dfa within the larger process is to operationalize an inff okay so you see there are you know, like a four steps okay inff and dfa scoping dfa supporting the inff uh, inception phase then inff development phase and inff becomes uh, you know like operational right so it's a typical format like how uh, uh, entrepreneurial you know like a startup or something in this area would uh, might uh, you know like a begin so point by point it is given uh, out over here UNDP finance sector hub SDG financing wheel so in this one we'll see you know like these uh, UNDP financial sector hub SDG financing wheel so integrated national financial uh, framework frameworks SDG budgeting SDG aligned financial and leveraging international public uh, financing for the sdgs then unlocking private uh, finance for the sdgs and we have aligning business strategies and operations for the sdgs and finally impact measurement and sdg finance reporting right so this is how it uh, 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 makes uh, its feel complete so dfa is the analytical framework begins with the assessment and diagnosis like it comes uh, you know like a here right so from here and onward how do you like take that feedback you know like uh, and uh, improve it right so apply to each inf building block 1 2 3 
you know, like these, uh, you can see what policies, institutional capacity analysis are in place, what initiatives are underway to strengthen policies, institutions, what opportunities exist for strengthening all of these, okay. So, what are the available things, what initiatives are taken and what opportunities, you know, are there. That's how it progresses, right. So, process of financing dialogues, government ministries, private sector, public entities, CSOs, development partners, right, agreement of IMFF roadmap. Recommendations are for a financial strategy at this place. Recommendations for enhanced monitoring and review, recommendations for stronger governance and coordination, further assessments and diagnosis. So overall implementation of INFF roadmap to operationalize INFF. So DFA is a tool for mapping the INFF building blocks. You can see this in detail, okay, for your benefit to understand more. Like uh, you see this, uh, these concentric circles, this inner one uh, represents government. Then private sector, civil society, international partners, right? And uh, on the four quadrants, governance and coordination, assessment and diagnosis, financing strategy and monitoring and review. In these uh, four, like how it is like a plan. So this mapping will help you with understanding those and uh, like a building blocks which are crucial for INFF. So spending tools. PEFA, PIMA, PERs, UNDP, RIA, UNICEF, you know, etc. And revenue to, uh, tools, TA, DAT, IMF, TEA, UNDP, SDG, Aligned Fiscal and uh, Debt Instruments. Then debt tools, we have DSA, UNDP, SDG, Aligned Fiscal and Debt Instruments, Private Financing Tools, SDG Investor Maps, UNEP, UNDP, Sustainable Finance Diagnostic, UNCTAD Investment Policy Reviews, etc. Then SDG costing maps, IMF, M, uh, MFF, SDG, right, public uh, finance policy in TA, PFM programming, SDG uh, budgeting, TIWB, private finance policy TA, SDG impact, business call to action, DREI, UNCDF, MAP, MM4P. So the costings involved in this. Okay, so there are three SDG costing for public you know, like sector, for private sector and costing for SDG products like together. Public, private, domestic and international resource across the financial landscape. So a huge disruption has happened in the, you know, like the last uh, one year when uh, this uh, some uh, disturbance, you know, like happened in the uh, Europe, Eastern Europe. Okay, and now this financial uh, resource movement scenario has also changed, you know, these international transactions, you know, like a SWIFT used to be the only one and now there is you know, like a major change into that platform also. So how these uh, public finances and the private finances are going to move, you know, from country to country, you know, that actually details out over here. But uh, as per this, uh, if you see in the public finance or in the private finance, Government finances, public entities, public private finances will come in the middle, then domestic commercial finances and purely private, you know, like this thing, not commercial private finance, right. So what are the domestic you know, finances possible in this? You can see here tax revenue, non-tax revenue, government, here we have revenue, here we have investment through PPPs, here we have private investment, credit to service private sector, you know, like, you know corporate bond, institutional investments, etc. Non-commercial private finances, foundations, you know, like a different philanthropic organizations, NGOs, faith-based organizations, you know, they bring in. At international level, you can uh, see this uh, little bit changes over here, development uh, cooperation, ODA grants, ODA loans, humanitarian assistance, other official flows, South-South cooperation, etc. And international private uh, financing, if you see, FDI is the one of the major, you know, like a players, then portfolio investment, illicit finances also, like, you know, backdoor black money, etc. International non-commercial private finances, they help with the remittances. Three integrations of a financing strategy at the heart of, uh, you know, INFF. Three uh, integrations of a financing strategy and INFF, you can see over here through this, 